Turn that on. Oh well. Okay. <laughs> what else can we do? Just one the next one, seventeen. <laughs> Uh, okay, so <clears throat> which of the following intervals is dy dx greater than zero and d2y over dx2 less than zero? <clears throat> so if the dy dx is greater than zero, what does that tell you about the function? What should the function be doing? Increasing. Increasing. And if the second derivative is negative, then what's that tell you about the function? Uh, that is concave down. Yeah. So you're looking for the interval or intervals where the function is increasing and at the same time concave uh, down. So for your graph, I split it into three intervals. Uh, between A and B, B and C, and C and D. <laughs> so you just got to pick out the sections that are increasing but are also concave down. So if you look at the first interval, A to B, is it increasing? Yes. Is it concave down? No. No. OK, so that first one's out. From B to C, is it increasing? Yep. Is it concave down? No. Yes. B to C? From B to C, it's concave down. OK. And then from C to D, it's not increasing, so that one's out. So the only option is that's doing both is from B to C. So when you said that it wasn't concave down from between B and C, um, <clears throat> why did you think it was concave up? It was increasing. The increasing got me confused. Okay. And then I was, I was thinking concave down was once you got to C to D, but uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, because functions can increase in one of two ways. They can either be concave up like this, or they could be increasing and concave down like that. <coughs> so it just depends on okay. which Okay, so goes. the A to B, it's only part of half of the concavity. Yeah, A to B, it's concave up. And then B to C and C to D, those are both concave down.
Uh, let's see, Ryan, do you have any questions? Um, yeah, I had one. I think I lost it. Oh. Uh, number four on the next section. On the next section? Yeah, I, don't, I think I might have my pages in the wrong order. I don't know. Like, number four, are you talking about the next chapter? Yeah, does it go to another chapter? Like chapter five? No. It's a question about rules theorem, or it applies the rules theorem. I just don't know how it got. Uh, Is it from the pages. study guide or a homework question? That's yeah, number four. Uh, I did have homework questions. I don't know. It's mostly from uh, 4.7, though. I had a pretty hard time on the homework. I did, too. I, I probably got through half of it because it took me days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 4.7 can be tough. <clears throat> Both the, the derivative application sections are it's normal to to be going, what is this? <clears throat> so that would be like, so related rates from chapter three and optimization from chapter four are usually the trickiest ones out of the, in the book <clears throat> or in the class, sorry. Okay, uh, do you want me to read the problem? Um, can you tell me what page it's on? Yeah. It's on 266. Okay. Uh, number 29. Are you on the fourth edition? Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay. So yes, you will have to read me that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, okay, it says a rectangular page is to contain 30 square inches of print. The margins on each side are one inch. Find the dimensions of the page such that the least amount of paper is used. Okay, what was the thing about the 30? Uh, it has to contain 30 square inches of print. Oh, oh, okay. So in here. More or less. Yeah, I didn't really know if that meant that the inside is just equal to 30. Or if we're so the area find... of the inside would be 30 square inches. Right. And the margins were one each all the way around? Yeah. Yeah? OK. What number was that? He's on a different edition. I uh, think it's in the, I think it's in the sixth edition. Let me... I think they even do they draw a picture of it too? No, I, not for this I one. wouldn't have done it then, right? Because I have a different edition, I wouldn't have done the same homework. Is it so third? So in the sixth edition, it's number 17. Okay, right, so I did not, I did not do that one then. Okay. 
because you just had like I was thinking of the 4.6 I think that I couldn't get through I finished all the ones from page 262 okay except for the last one yeah. okay so the margins are each one so if we let the so in the print area if we let that base equal x then the base of the page is going to be x plus two because you're having to add in that one inch on either side. To give you the whole bottom part of the page. And then the same type of thing for the top or for the height. If we let the inside of the print area be Y, like the height of that print area, then the height of the entire page is going to be y plus two. Because again, you're having to add in those that one inch margin on the top and then add in the one inch margin on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's about as far as I got. I couldn't figure out how to set up the primary and secondary. Equations. So your primary. is they want the, um, shoot. Oh, find the, okay. Find the dimensions of the page. So that the least amount of paper is used. <laughs> So your primary equation is still area. So it'd be x plus two times y plus two. And then your secondary is also going to be area, but it's the area of the print. So that would just be x, y, and you also know that that area is what? Equal to 30? 30. So now it's your choice. You can solve for X or you can solve for Y. Uh, and it's not gonna matter. So I will let you pick. <laughs> uh, uh, let's solve for Y. Okay. So Y equals 30 over X. So if we plug it into the primary, we have X plus two is equal to uh, 30 over X. Plus two. And you could leave it alone. You could foil it. Um, but no matter which way you go with it, you're going to have to take the derivative. So do you want to foil it um, and then do the derivative, or do you want to do the product rule with your derivative and leave it alone? I would probably just do the product rule. Okay. So 
So your derivative of x plus two is just one times the 30 over x plus two. The derivative of 30 over x plus two is negative 30 over x squared. times x plus two. So distribute So 30 over x plus 2 uh, minus 30 over x uh, minus 60 over x squared. So your 30 over x's cancel out. And then if you get a common denominator with the two and the 60 x squared, you end up with two x squared minus 60. All over x squared. And that's what you'll set equal to zero so you can get your uh, critical numbers. So from the denominator, x is zero. And then from the top, it would be plus or minus square root of 30. And most of the time with these problems, when you come up with multiple solutions for x, only one of them is going to yield the maximum or minimum of whatever. And most of the time, you can kind of reason your way through as to which one it is. So you have three different values, 0, root 30, and negative root 30. So which one should you just be able to automatically toss out? Uh, zero and the negative. Yeah, you can uh, you can toss out the negative for sure because you're working with distance or length. You can't have a negative. Uh, you can also toss out the zero because then you wouldn't really have a page. <laughs> so your only option. is x is equal to root 30. However, they want the dimensions of the page, not the dimensions of the print area. So x, you know what x is. So to get the dimensions of the print area, you got to plug it in. So if you plugged it into the base down here, that x plus 2, base of the page would be 30 plus root 30 plus 2 inches. And then for the y value, kind of the same thing. Because um, you know y is 30 over x. So y itself comes out to root 30. So y plus 2 is equal to root 30 plus 2.
So you basically have a square. Could you plug um, the X back into the first area equation to solve for the Y? No, you use uh, this one. Oh, okay. Because you have Y by itself. <laughs> so when, you, when you're looking for like the other dimension, you're probably going to go off of the secondary equation because that's the one that has um, your value in it. <laughs> but you can't plug it into the primary because you don't know what the area is. So if you did, you'd end up with some number times y equals a, which doesn't help you. <laughs> going what else do you want to know about number 19 on the exam issue okay let us be a polynomial with degree greater than two if a is not equal to b and f of a equals f of b equals one, which the following must be true for at least one value of x between a and b. So what did they just set up for you? We know that it's a function that has a degree greater than two. Okay. Polynomial. Yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> okay, so it's a polynomial. So right there, what do you know about it? What else do you know, given that it's a polynomial? Uh, we know it's continuous and differentiable. Yeah on any interval they could ever give you. You know it's continuous and differentiable. OK. What else did they give you? So that was the first sentence. Well, a is not equal to b, and f of a is equal to f of b is equal to 1. OK. So what thing have they just set up for you? You know it's continuous, you know it's differentiable, and you know that f of a equals f of b. That matches up to something. That's a criteria for something. Is that the That's Rolls theorem. Okay. So we know they just set up Rolls theorem for us. So um, Rolls theorem applies, which uh, means that you can now do what or now or what does the theorem say that's guaranteed let 
F be continuous on the closed interval, A be differentiable on the open interval, A, B. Keep going. Oh, if F of A is equal to F of B, then there is at least one number of C, A, and B such that F C equals zero. F so out of your prime. choices, which one is it? Look at it. Uh, two. F prime X equals zero. Yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't say anything about the function equaling zero or the second derivative. Okay, what else could we do? You wanna go ahead and go to the next one, evaluate the limits on 20? If you have a question on them. <laughs> like, I just, I'm gonna go over them either way. I just haven't gone over them because I haven't gotten that far, so. Okay, so you do 20A then. Okay, you can try. So when we're evaluating the limits, we're just looking for the horizontal asymptote. Um, Is, let me. Yeah, that's that's. Um, look at the notes. That's what it translates to. Okay. Um, but for these, like it'll either say evaluate the limit or where's the horizontal asymptote. Um, <clears throat> If it says where is the horizontal asymptote, it's just going to give you a function. Okay, so at the I'm taking the guidelines of the finding the horizontal asymptote to this, like the highest power is yeah. is it equal? Is it this or that? Then that, unless it's an oblique, there's those are the only two. I mean, that's where my brain goes first is looking at the power, the highest power on the numerator and denominator and figuring yeah. out. All right, so let's see. So this one is equal. And it's equal, it's um, take the coefficient. So we got um, nine six, which is three twos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, I don't know, I get those, I guess. Um, maybe do a heart one that has like a square root in it. Those usually get a little more confusing to me. Okay. Like, um, pick one. The C. C. One
Okay, so what would you do? First, take out the um, the square root. Get it looking a little different. So, um, yeah, because you're only paying attention to the highest powers. <clears throat> but that'll change the power if you take it out of the square root. Right, but you're still looking at the highest powers on top and the highest powers on the bottom. So <clears throat> inside the radical, it's still only the highest power. So the negative one is not going to do anything. You're it's just the 16x squared that is. So you root it. So it's 4x. And then the top, you're still only looking at the highest power. <clears throat> Which it comes so from your negative equal. x. So, the so negative, now it's a tie. Yeah. Negative one over four. So negative four fourth is the answer. Mm -hmm. Can we do E? Yeah. <clears throat> so what does a negative exponent do? And just FYI, Zoom might cut off again because we've reached our 40 minute time limit like, once again. So the X goes to the denominator, negative exponent can go to the denominator to be positive. I don't know. Yeah. But would it be this 